Hey, I'm Jeff. And I'm Phil, and we're the Cocktail Dudes. Today we're talking about cocktail aging barrels. That's right. Yes. We have our full collection here. Although we have mm-hmm. one little smaller that we... It's currently in the basement. This is 20 liters, this puppy here. Yep, that's, that's a big like one. Five and a quarter gallons, all right? <laughs> 10 liters, 5 liters, and 3 liters. Yep. Mm-hmm. The 3 liter one is going to be your most common one for using around the house. And they have it on your kitchen countertop. Right, experimenting with, all right. You use the big guy here if you're a bar or if you're having a lot of people over for a party, mm-hmm. right? We've used this guy once. Right. And let me tell you, it holds a lot of liquor. <laughs> it was yeah. a good party. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do today is talk a little bit about barrels, kind of barrel management, mm-hmm. and uh, what they have to offer, right? So you, in aging cocktails in a barrel, you're gonna get a mellower cocktail, you're going to get the harsh alcohol edges are going to be rounded. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to get the characteristics from the oak. So a little oakiness, a little vanilla, which is natural from oak, and the character from whatever was in the barrel previously. That's right. Right? Now these barrel, barrels that we get from barrelsonline.com, mm-hmm. right? And we say that because people are curious, but we didn't get these for free, right? No, we didn't. Just like everything else... Um, we pay for everything ourselves, and we don't get anything for free. So for plugging something, it's not because people are giving us free stuff. It's just because we like it. And I think they're reasonably priced. What you look for in a barrel is thick oak, mm-hmm. all right? Of course, you want the seams tight. We'll talk about that a little bit later. All right. You want it charred on the inside. This has sort of a medium char, and that's kind of what the inside of the barrel looks like. Um, once you get it rinsed out, you'll see. So that's sort of the amount of char on these barrels. Mm-hmm. And um, nice, you know, tight seams. Okay? That's right. Yeah, you also, um, you don't want it varnished because you want it to be able to breathe. Right. So. And that's what makes barrel aging cocktails fun. Mm -hmm. It's when the liquid inside the barrel goes in and out of the wood. That's right. right. And that's what gives it its flavor. Like the bourbon barrels in Kentucky or the scotch barrels in the Highlands, Mm -hmm. it's the, the variation in humidity and temperature that makes things... Uh, makes the contents go in and out of the wood. Yep, and that's why you mentioned uh, we have one right now down in the basement. We put that down there because um, that's the the climate is going to vary a lot more. Yeah, if you just leave it in your house, it's very temperature controlled. There isn't a lot of variance, so that's not going to allow it to go in and out. Yeah, we are a little contrarian as to a lot of things. All right, mm-hmm. we we believe in sticking these in your garage. Yep. All right and let them fluctuate with the humidity and the temperature. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's where you're gonna get the most flavor. Now, a small barrel like this, you're gonna start noticing the difference at about 30 days. If you're using the Monster here, um, it's gonna take about a month and a half or so. That's right, so plan your parties way ahead of yeah. time. <laughs> but it's fun, you know, fill one up and just taste it every day, every mm-hmm. five days. It's sort of fun to watch it evolve. If you get to a spot where you're saying, hey, this is really good, um, then you can bottle it. We have these little six and a half ounce bottles and we'll uh, show you how to do that. You just bottle it, cap it, and put it in your refrigerator and that empties out your barrel so you can start another round, right? Yeah, it won't keep aging in the, in the bottle, but it does open up your barrel for other things and you get to keep that flavor that you like so yeah. much. And you want to keep track of what is in your barrel mm-hmm. and the history of your barrel because what you have in there is going to seep into the wood and flavor it and if you put something different in the barrel next time, it's gonna add that. Yeah. Right, this guy here has had two Negronis in it, and then we switched to a Martini. So you don't really taste the Negroni when you're tasting the Martini, but you have sort of a hint of it, a little bit of bitterness, a little bit, a bit of sort of extra depth to it, which yeah. adds interest and fun, right? Yeah, it's fun another, to experiment that way too. Another great way to add a little more complexity to a lot of different cocktails. Yeah. Now, when they make a barrel, of course, they put the hoops on the front part first. Mm-hmm. Turn it upside down, char it on the inside, and then put the butt in. All right. And then they drill the holes in the top and the front. All right. So when you get these things, they're going to be filled with sawdust. Right. So the first thing you have to do is rinse them out. And you do that at the sink. You plug the bottom hole with your finger, and then fill it up with warm water. Just slosh it around a bit, and then turn it over, and let it empty out of the top hole and all the sawdust and bits of charred wood that are free and that you don't want in your drink are going to come out. Mm -hmm. And then just repeat that as necessary until the water you put in the barrel looks like the water that's coming out, right? right? 
with the small barrel, it takes about two rinses. Mm -hmm. With this big guy, like four or five times. But right. it's not that hard to do. I mean, this thing gets heavy. <laughs> but just do it, and then when it's, when it's uh, clear, you're good. Right. Then you put the spout in the bottom hole, and then tap it in firmly with a hammer. And then you're set. Mm -hmm. Now, what most people recommend is fill it up with water. Because every barrel is going to leak a little bit. We've had a few that haven't leaked. Mm -hmm. But when they do leak, they're going to leak around here, around the head, or of course in the back on the butt, mm -hmm. at that seam. Occasionally they will leak along the sides, but that's, that's more uncommon. Right. But we don't believe in adding water. I mean, the idea, you add a liquid, it will get uh, drawn into the wood, the wood will expand, and all the seams will become really tight. Yeah, but the problem is, is now you have that water in the wood, so yeah. it's going to water down whatever you put in there. Yeah. So it's worth a little bit of leakage to not water down the, the cocktails that you're putting yeah. in. Yeah. So we, after it's cleaned, we will put the cocktail mixture straight in there. Mm -hmm. And it's going to leak, and it's going to stain uh, a little bit if it leaks out. You're going to have a Campari stain or a Sweet Vermouth stain. Right. But that doesn't bother us, right? No, not at all. It's like seeing a Jeep with mud on it. It's like, <laughs> hey... All right, way to go, guy. You're driving that thing like you're supposed to. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. So this is holding, <laughs> it's, you know, it's for holding cocktails. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if you don't want, if you want to keep it nice and pretty, then soak it with water. It will water down a little bit, but that's, you know, it's, it is. I don't know that it's really noticeable, but it sort of is in our psyche. Yeah, you know, that's we right. kind of know it's there. <laughs> um, so that's the trick. Now, in between, when you're, when the barrel's empty. Mm -hmm. and you're going to fill it with something else, you want to just sterilize it a little bit. So you take your big, this is a five liter beaker, so five liters of warm water, one teaspoon of citric acid, which you can get um, at your baking store mm -hmm. or in the, down usually by the canning aisle in your supermarket, yep. right? And we use that, it's preservative, we use that in some of our syrups like our them and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you just pour a teaspoon of citric acid in the water, Stir that to get it mixed up. And then just pour it into your freshly emptied barrel. And then just shake it around for about five minutes. And that will just um, get any mold or anything in there, knock it out. Right. Now if you're using you know, high proof spirits, you're not going to have as much of a problem as if you're using um, wine or aging beer. Or if you have some sort of fruit juices in there, like lemon juice or lime juice, which are really going to get things going moldy. Mm -hmm. But since you can't see in there, you don't really know. So right. rinse it out with a citric acid wash, dump it out, and then rinse it with water. Dump that out, and then you're ready to go again. Yeah, and it shouldn't affect the flavor because you're not leaving it in there to get soaked into the wood. So it's yeah. just rinsing everything out of there. and All the flavors that could be trapped in the wood, they're not going to be affected. Yeah, And if you're going to store a barrel for a long time, uh, without using it, you do want to keep you do want to keep some liquid inside it, about a quarter of the way full of liquid, just uh, to keep the seams tight. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can uh, it'll get loose, and then your barrels will slip and slide, and you don't want that. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's the key thing. Put it uh, on your shelf. Enjoy it. Watch it evolve. Um, drink it until it's empty. Mm -hmm. Refill it again, or if you want, you can bottle it up. Pour some into your bottle, label it, cap it, keep it chilled in the refrigerator, and you can have a barrel-aged cocktail at any time. That's right. All right? So there's the tools and technique video on barrel-aging cocktails. Enjoy. Cheers.